Hey guys, this is Jade Wee from Dallas Jamming, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about Dallas Jamming, making music without a computer. Now, why would anyone want to do that? The computer has so much to offer. Well, the reason I made Dallas Jamming was because I was so sick and tired of having to plug in my MIDI controller, load up Logic, load up a VST, updates, crashes, and that process of creation really got diminished every time I did that. I felt I needed something different. I started playing piano when I was 13. I got a little simple Casio keyboard and that was pretty much my thing. And then I eventually wanted to record those songs and somebody introduced me to GarageBand and that's pretty much how I started making music and making tracks on GarageBand. Then I started playing guitar, wanted to record that as well, started recording GarageBand, eventually got Logic, but at some point I felt I really lost touch with my instrument because of scrolling through VSTs, um, the computer constantly crashing, constantly updating, and I had a good computer and you still get these crashes regardless. So it's not that the DAW is bad, but I wanted to do something different. I wanted to have physical touch with my instruments again. And I started looking online um, how to make music without a computer and I've learned absolutely so much since I went dollars. I was dollars, completely dollars, recording without a computer. I recorded into H4M Pro for about two years. I was completely dollars and there was always a, a missing link, the end part. And I eventually went hybrid, which means I now jam dollarsly, create my ideas without the computer, and then when I'm ready to record, I take that to the computer and make a finished track. So I bought and sold a lot of gear. I went through a lot of gear in the past two years trying to find the right setup. And in all that time, I learned that it doesn't matter what gear you have as long as you're making music. So I wanted to talk about a few setups that are good so you don't waste as much time as I did. There's a few ways of doing this. There is no right or wrong way. It really depends on what you like and on your workflow. The first thing that you need to ask yourself is what kind of musician are you? Are you a keyboardist? Are you a beat maker? Are you a singer? I mean, Dallas is anything. There is no rules to Dallas. It's not just electronic music. I feel I've made a lot of electronic music lately because of my instruments and the instruments that I've had, but I really want to get back to making reggae and chill beats and things like that. So once you figure out what's important to you, you can start looking at gear. If you're a keyboardist, <clears throat> Sorry, I got a cold. If you're a keyboardist and you don't have a synthesizer, I highly recommend getting a synthesizer as your first piece of gear. Why? Because if you're used to loading a VST and scrolling through presets and messing with the mouse, trying to twist the knobs with the mouse, you're gonna appreciate that sense of touch with the synthesizer and that's really gonna get you to play back keys. If you're a beat maker, I highly recommend that you get yourself a groove box, something like the Novation Circuit um, to start, you know, on the cheaper levels. The Electribe or the Electribe Sampler. If you're in a, if you have a higher budget, something like an Electron Analog 4 or an Electron Analog Rhythm, that's also a synthesizer, it's not just a drum machine. But if you're starting off and you're on a budget, I highly suggest that you stop lusting over expensive gear that you can't afford and stay within your budget. That way you get all the essentials that you need to build a foundation for your studio. So when I first started, I was really into the Cork Volca series. Um, the Volca Keys, Volca Bass, Volca Beats, Volca FM. They're all great synthesizers with built-in sequencers. The Volca Keys has some effects. I don't remember if the other ones do or not. It's been a minute. But they were great starting pieces, and I actually still have my Volca Keys because it just sounds so awesome. Even with all this gear, I still keep my Volca Keys because it's just an awesome piece of gear. I miss them, but I eventually sold them so I could afford other things but it's a really great starting point if you want that analog sound if you want a built-in sequencer you just get those and a mixer and you're set something else to look at is the Roland Boutique series the um, Juno 06 the Ju 06 the JP 08 the JX03 I think that's what it's called um, there are these little synthesizers I believe there are four voices if I'm not mistaken and they're just desktop synths. You can um, buy the little keyboard, optional keyboard tray, but that's if you're into mini keys, which I do not like. You can also eventually down the line get yourself a hardware sequencer and control those little desktop synths. So once you have a hardware sequencer, which is a brain pretty much that controls all your gear, you're only just going to need one MIDI keyboard to control all of them. And that's a fun setup to have, a main sequencer with a bunch of little modules. That's a great setup to have for a Dallas Jammer. 
So I know you probably have a lot of questions. What's MIDI in, out, through, aux, the type of cables that I need to use. I made a video about that for Ask Audio. I'm going to put the link below so you can check that out. But basically, you're going to want to get yourself a MIDI through box. These things are like 40, 45 bucks. And it's going to make your life a whole lot easier once you have more than one piece of gear. Because it'll let you choose a piece as your main piece. And then that piece will control and send clock to all your other gear as well. I normally used it when I have my Octatrack. I'm waiting on my new one. Octatrack was my main clock. And then I used the through box for that. And I send clock and I sequenced all my other gear with that box. So I highly recommend making that purchase because at some point in the chain connecting MIDI out, MIDI in, the clock is gonna start lagging and that's a great solution for that. So when I first went on my journey, my main thing was I want to get inspired again. I want to get back to making music. I don't just want to record. I don't just find, I don't want to find a new way to record. I want to find a new way to create, to start the process of creation, to get inspired. So I didn't think about recording. Luckily, the mixer that I got, um, my first mixer was a MG10XU Yamaha. I think they're like 200 bucks. I got it on eBay for like 170. And luckily, that one had a USB out. So I literally plugged in the USB to my computer and opened up Logic and it literally recorded everything that I made into one audio track. So once you start jamming again, you're going to want to record your music. There's a few ways of doing this. Um, I fought against getting an interface for the longest time. I wanted to keep it 100% dollars, 100% legit it really became like a religious thing being dollars but there is no reason not to embrace technology and not to take advantage of what the computer can do for us especially in the sense of recording i now use the computer as a glorified audio recorder and it's amazing at that so if you already have an interface keep your interface um i plug my mixer into my interface that way i still get that feeling that i have full control and i don't have to be looking at the screen messing with the knobs trying to fix the EQs and all that. My main reason for not wanting to get an interface was that I didn't want to depend on the computer to make music. I didn't want to have to turn anything on the computer to be able to jam. And I absolutely haven't had to do that. I turn on my monitors in the morning and then I turn them off at night. So anytime during the day all I have to do is turn on my mixer, turn on my instrument and pretty much just get jamming. The interface is always on and the monitors are on pretty much until the end of the night. So it's not like I have to constantly be turning everything on. And not only that, but you take the advantage of having some nice ass monitors for your computer to actually listen to your final track. So that's definitely an advantage of having an interface. So if you've been thinking about getting an interface, don't hesitate. Also, I really want to say, you don't necessarily need the DAW to make music. If you've been doing it a certain way for 10, 20 years on an 8-track recorder or whatever, you don't have to go to the DAW to make a finished track. But that's the way I started and I feel it really works with my setup. I really enjoy having the flexibility of editing things in the DAW after I've jammed and I really love not having to depend on the doll as my instrument. I'm not against VSTs or anything like that but I just enjoy being able to twist the knobs and create the sound all on my own without having to look at the computer. When at your job you have to be on a computer and I take a lot of online classes I'm not trying to make music on the computer I'm not trying to finish my homework and then be like, oh, I'm gonna just now, I've just spent four hours on the computer, now let me open up Logic and try to try to create. No, I don't wanna do that. That's the reason I created Dollars Jamming. And I know there's people like me out there because I created the group and you know, there's over 5,000 members in the Facebook group. So if you guys wanna check that out, the link is also below. And there you can see Dollars Jams, you can see people's setups, you can see how everybody makes music without the computer. And that's really the goal in this channel. So you got yourself a synthesizer, what next? You're going to want to get more synthesizers, right? Because you want different sounds. Well, now that you have a main keyboard synthesizer, it's okay to get a few desktop synths because the thing as a keyboardist is like, now you have something to play. Like, now life is complete. You don't have to splurge. If you have the money to splurge, why not? Get five, six, seven keyboards, whatever, but take time to know them. Also, don't forget to get a mixer because there's no way of plugging each synthesizer into your monitors. Your monitors only have two outs. Having a mixer lets you take all the sound from each of your instruments and put it into one output. So 
all your synthesizers are going to go into the mixer and then that mixer is going to go to the monitors and you're going to hear all of your instruments that's why a mixer is so important i didn't really understand a mixer at first like it took me so long to grasp the idea of a mixer because it was like in a doll you don't need a mixer you know like everything is there and going dollless has really taught me so much about music like i'm so glad i went dollless because I've just learned absolutely so much, it's absolutely changed my life and it's gotten me back to making music and that's the main thing here. Don't think that you need the most expensive gear to make music. Honestly, I feel I made the best music when I had my Volkas because it's absolutely all I had and I was on a budget and it really forced me to explore those instruments. Coming into the synth world from a doll is really overwhelming because you're introduced to all these synthesizers and drum machines and samplers and all these machines that you've never seen before. All you're used to is scrolling through presets and plugins. So entering that world, you have to be really careful because gas, gear acquisition syndrome, is a serious thing. And although a lot of people like to joke about it, it really is a serious thing. And there's a dark side to gas where you just buy, 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 and you're never making any music. So my setup now is a lot smaller than what it used to be. So I got my Indigo, I got my little fatty, I got my TRA, my Volca keys, my modular. Over here I got the OP-1 and the TT-303. I got a few pedals over here and my push. So as you can see, like it's two separate areas. This is my Dallas area, and when I want to get stuff done, this is the computer area. And it's nice to have two areas because, like I said, I don't like the idea of having to depend on the computer to make music. So if you're like me and you want to get inspired and you want to see my process and everything I'm learning and not make as many mistakes as I did when I started, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you guys can check everything out. So you got yourself a mixer, you got yourself some synthesizers, you got yourself a groove box. Make some music. See you guys later.